I am delighted to be introducing this year's special screening of Jaws in Concert with live accompaniment by the National Symphony Orchestra. My late husband, Peter Benchley, wrote the book Jaws 44 years ago, and we were, of course, ecstatic when Universal Studios made it into a movie. We love being part of the filming on Martha's Vineyard. You'll see Peter in the movie as the young reporter on the beach. In fact, I drove him to the beach for the shoot and caused the filming to be inadvertently shut down because only union drivers were allowed to transport actors. I was horrified and Peter had to go on bended knee to beg the union to forgive him and let the filming go on. We were astonished when both the book and the movie became blockbuster hits. And we were thrilled that the success allowed us to take many marine expeditions to learn about sharks and work on ocean conservation issues. The movie, directed by a young Steven Spielberg and coupled with an epic music score by John Williams, took Jaws to a whole new level and created a pop culture phenomenon. It made sharks a permanent fixture in our minds when we think about the ocean. Jacques Cousteau brought the beauty of the ocean to television, and Jaws brought the excitement of the ocean to the big screen. And over the decades, Jaws has taken on a new quality as a multi-generational family film experience. The fact that Jaws has evolved into a family affair underscores how much attitudes about sharks have changed. One of the most meaningful facets of the Jaws experience for me personally has been the countless number of ocean scientists, citizen activists, and photojournalists who have told me that they went into their chosen field because of Jaws. It inspired them to look below the thin blue line of the surface, and this has transformed our understanding of sharks and the sea. Over the past decades, the blue scientific community has shown that sharks do not like to eat people, period. Humans are too bony, we don't have enough blubber, so most bites are test bites that are quickly spit out. Sharks, including great whites, are not man-eaters. We've learned that sharks are essential to the overall health of the ocean. They act as crowd control in helping to maintain order. Without sharks, the balance of the entire ocean food chain can topple, creating a devastating effect. Unfortunately, sharks are in serious danger because of humans. The numbers are staggering. Nearly 100 million sharks are killed each year in order to use their fins for shark fin soup. This soup is served as a status symbol across much of China and Asia. Finning is not regular fishing. It is a barbaric killing process where the fins are severed from live sharks and the sharks are then thrown back into the ocean to die a slow death. Thankfully, this slaughter of sharks is being turned around due to the efforts of Wild Aid, a nonprofit organization that works to stop the killing of endangered animals. Their massive education campaigns in China have caused a significant shift in attitudes and consumption has fallen by more than 80%. To put the magnitude of this behavior change in context, millions of people no longer buy shark fin soup, and a whole new movement of shark supporters has been created. This is why I am more hopeful than ever about the survival of sharks. The world now understands and values the vital role sharks play in the health of our oceans, and they want to see sharks swimming in our seas, not in our soup bowls. To learn more about sharks and all the magnificent, fascinating wildlife in our oceans, I encourage you to visit right here in your own backyard, Sant Ocean Hall at the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History, as it celebrates its 10th anniversary this fall, with some exciting new exhibits opening in early November, including one that looks at the fossil record of ancient 
extinct ocean creatures called sea monsters. If I could ask one thing, it would be to please support an ocean conservation group. There are so many wonderful ones doing superb work to protect our beaches and marine wildlife, and they need our help. I would like to thank Wolf Trap and NSO for hosting this terrific performance. And I'd also like to thank the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History and Discovery for their participation. Have a fabulous time enjoying the excitement and classic thrill of Jaws, and especially the music of John Williams, performed by the magnificent National Symphony Orchestra. Thank you. <laughs>